So I discovered something at Marco's Pizza. Apparently, so did 613 of you as well. How about we make this just a little more carnivore friendly? To start, we need to do some prep. You can absolutely skip this green nonsense if you want, but I personally really like the flavor of parsley that it adds to dishes like this. You'll want about three tablespoons of it chopped up finely. Next, we're gonna need some Parmesan, but in two different forms. First, let's grate about four ounces of this extra pungent Parmesan I found at the store. The only reason why I say grate is so that it'll melt easier later when we go to make our Alfredo sauce. The grater side is the scariest side in my opinion. Not many people seem to use it and it has the sharpest edges. Just mysterious and dangerous, kind of like Marco's Pizza. Now let's take two ounces of Parmesan and shred it on the smallest holes of a box grater. This will be for the meatballs. Finally, to finish out the cheeses, let's grate about one pound of low moisture mozzarella on the largest holes of the same grater. I've never seen a box grater being used as much as this one has. All right, it's time for the main event. Grab one pound of mild Italian sausage and remove it from the casing. You can always squeeze it out, but that's pretty unsettling. Or you can do what I did and slice the casing to remove it, which is also quite unsettling. Do this for all of them and get them into a mixing bowl. For the balls, we're gonna do a 50-50 mix of Italian sausage and ground beef. Add in your beef along with two eggs, your shredded Parmesan, about half your parsley, some black pepper, and about a quarter teaspoon of salt to get the ground beef into Flavortown. For the most fun part of this whole process, take your grimy yet obviously sanitized mitts and combine this well. This took me about four minutes to finish. You don't have to do this, but I put my bowl of meat on a scale and portioned out two ounce meatballs. Here's what two ounces looks like with my hand for scale. Repeat the step until your meat has been used up. Place your balls into a pan that's been set over medium high heat. Cook these for about two minutes to get a crust and then flip using a spoon. Once another two minutes has been up, place the entire pan into an oven that's been set to 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. While we're waiting on these meatballs to cook, let's make this alfredo sauce. Add about one and a half cups of heavy cream to a pan that's set to medium heat. While we wait for this to heat up, add in about a quarter teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. Continuously stir this in order to keep the cream from overflowing. I let mine reduce for about five minutes, but it may take yours a little longer. All you need to know is that once it's thickened, turn the heat off and start to slowly add in your grated cheese. Once all of your cheese is added, stir in about a tablespoon of butter. Season this to taste, but the four ounces of Parmesan should be more than enough. Once the meatballs are out of the oven, you'll want to drain the grease because we don't need that. All right, meatballs, done. Sauce, done. Cheese, yes, like a lot of cheese. I remember when I was eating the Marco's Pizza meatball bake, I said, this is too much cheese, so we have to follow suit. Place this entire pan into your oven at 450 degrees for 15 minutes or until, well, you see it, don't you? If you don't, it's browned and bubbly. How about you take a couple seconds of B-roll to appreciate this? I forgot to hit record for the first meatball. Sorry, I was quite hungry by this point. But here it is, rich and super flavorful. The Italian sausage just works so well with the Alfredo sauce and I just couldn't be happier with it. I was wondering where all of my cheese went and realized it sunk to the bottom of the pan. The only way to get extra cheese from the bottom is by liking and subscribing.